Hey, what is up guys? It is your voice speed here and my god, isn't it just a great day? Well, yesterday in particular was a great day. If you guys didn't have the chance to tune into our last and final DPC Division 2 game, we managed to pull it off, which netted us $7,000 and the ability to play in DPC Division 2 again next time which i am absolutely pumped about guys thank you so much for all your support a lot of you guys were dming me on twitter you know even just leaving comments just in ton of different places like i, I even saw a lot of people in the chat i watched back the vod so so many people in chat supporting the team supporting me and i genuinely appreciate it guys like it, it really does make my day it makes me so happy uh, that I get to do this currently for a living. It's just absolutely incredible. So thank you so much for your support. I really mean that. And uh, today, we're going to be looking at game number two between us and Byzantine Raiders. And EE is on the other team, so that should bring some excitement to the table. Nonetheless, we're going to go over, you know, some draft things the entire game. Kind of my game plan of my team. I have nothing to hide. We have nothing to hide, you know. Just playing Dota. I'm going to share with you all the strategies that we use in order to win our games. So hopefully you can do the same. All right, before we get into it, come on! I won a, an entire series in the DPC. You guys got to get a Game Leap sub. You see what it does to me. I just won $7,000. Technically, I only get $1,400 of it. But look, if you get a Game Leap sub, that's going to happen to you. I mean, it's basically guaranteed. On top of that, I'm going to be giving all of my teammates free Game Leap subs. <laughs> I mean, dude, next time, now that they all have Game Leap subs, we're going to win Division 1. Even though we're not in Division 1, we're going to win Division 1. That's how powerful it is. Crazy. All right, so let's get right into the draft. Uh, hopefully, you've clicked the link down below and signed up. But let's get to the draft. So first things first, we opened up with the Void Spirit. Now, we opened up with Void Spirit because we knew the enemy team didn't play Monkey King mid. Uh, because we know they don't play Monkey King mid, we didn't really feel too worried about picking Void Spirit. Hero doesn't have a lot of counters. Like, I'd say Ember can be pretty good against in mid. But in general, yeah, I would say Void just, it's a very solid hero. It doesn't lose very many lanes. Then they went for the Shaman. So we respond with the Clock. It's just a good matchup. We also have a, a two teammates that both like playing Clock. It's also a high tempo hero that sets up a lot of kills, plays a very high tempo with the Void Spirit. And in case they pick Alk, I also feel like um, Clockwork is pretty good against Alk because you do so much damage to the Alk in the early game and you can really easily run him down in the jungle. Think about it. If the Alk goes into the jungle to farm, what do you do? You go beat him up. Now, what hero is really good at beating other heroes up when there's no creeps around? You might be saying, oh, what about jungle creeps? Yeah, but they de-aggro, right? Clock, he's so good. So even if supports come to contest you, you have this incredible clockwork that can do that. And he did that this game, which was awesome. In terms of bans, we banned out DP and Tide just here as we didn't want to play against. I think they banned Beast and Prophet for the same reason. We banned TA because they have a TA spammer, then Quap because their mid player plays Quap. They ban, uh... Timber, Razor, for the Alchemist. They're just protecting the, the Alchemist. They, they last but not least ban the Ursa. They're just completely protecting the Alchemist. Three heroes that simply do well against Alchemists that you do not want Alchemists to have to play into. And funny enough, we were literally going to pick Ursa if they did not ban it here. So they uh, they got us on that one. And then we ban Lesh. Just banning out all the heroes we simply don't want um, A and B, their mid laner, to be able to play in the mid lane. They go for the Sam, which honestly, we were going to pick Sam here. Just because we, we have it as a comfort hero. Also, the mana regen's great with these two heroes. But uh, they picked a hero. It's kind of weird. I really expected them to pick a hero that's like better with Alk. Such as Lion. Uh, but they already have Shaman. Shaman Lion's kind of weird. It's alright, I guess. But it's kind of weird. A lot of disables, I suppose. But uh, <laughs> They go for Sion, which is okay with Alk. But funny enough, he ended up taking like his passive at level 2. Which is kind of weird. Because you want to just keep people in acid. But nonetheless... Uh, I don't know. I, it was kind of weird to me. I don't like CM Shaman. I'm just not like a huge fan of this concept. And because of that, like once I saw these two heroes, I was like really interested. Even once I saw these three heroes, I'm like, okay, I probably want to play PA. And the reason for that is just because like I can just kill them in fights. And you saw that if you guys watch, you saw that later into the game. I just I kind of like ripped in the shreds, right? Uh, then we go for the AA. Now, this is a hero I want to talk about because a lot of people like are really unfamiliar uh, with what AA does and why it's good. And you might be saying, Speed, I know why it's good. It shuts down Alk. <laughs> uh, which is true. It does shut down Alk. I mean, there's no denying that. It's ulti, cancels regen, Alk regens. But its W, in my opinion, is one of the best spells in Dota. I actually think AAW is incredibly underrated. And AA in general is just, in my opinion, one of the better supports right now. I actually believe that. it's. I think Chinese teams were picking it, one of my friends told me. But the main thing I'd like to say is 30% amped magic resistance uh magical damage with clock and void is just great like 
even if you don't hit AA Blast, if you just put down a nice Vortex on whoever clock hooks, they're just going to die to him, right? If Especially if it's one of the supports. And so that I just love. It just gives you this really nice mid game where, especially when AA hits six, you can just kill anybody. Clock plus AA can kill anybody. Like, there's only a few heroes that don't die to them. And uh, that, that's what we really like here. It's also really good against the Ox. So then they go for the Pango. You know, the casters were talking about how they don't like um, AA here because, you know, this is like a, a two strong laners and AA is a weak laner, or that's why they might not like it. And I respect that, you know, AA is just not that good of a laner. However, it's pretty good at playing defensive in lane because like it's got good attack range and it secures range creeps, which I'll show you in the game. We're going to watch it mostly from my perspective because obviously I have the most information about my own game. Uh, but then we go for the PA, as I talked about. I was a little bit hesitant against Pango because, you know, disarms and and uh, rolling thunder. But the lane, we felt like it should be all right. You know, with blur and dagger, I can play very defensive. Like, frankly, with this AA, I want a hero that can play very defensive in the lane. I don't want to have to walk up for every CS. Right. If I pick a hero like Wraith King, I'm very nervous that I'm going to have to just walk up for every CS and put myself out of position and get myself killed. That's how you die in these hard lanes with bad supports. You pick a hero that cannot contest range creeps. You overextend for the range creep. And you die, so I feel like PA, while she is very good against these heroes as is, is is a good solution to this hard lane with a weaker support. We also just like PA uh, against Alk as well. I think it's a pretty good matchup. But okay, then last but not least, we ban some more mids. They ban out uh, OD Slaughter, which is just some offlaners that could be good against their Alk. And uh, then we pick up the Mars. Honestly, it's just like meh. Like we wanted a team fight hero. Right, we want some A, yeah, we just want some AOE team fight. <laughs> we want another hero that can play tempo, and like, it's good against it. Elk and lane. Elk simply just can't trade too well against Mars. It's actually not that bad, funny enough. Early on, Elk can even beat uh, Mars, but like later on, yeah, it's just good mid game. You know, having arena, if you can arena spear into AA combo, I also talked about the Am magical damage. It's just another hero, and you might be saying, Speed, isn't this too much magical? Well, yeah, but honestly, Void Spirit, Mars do a good amount of physical, and then we have PA as well to top that off and then they finish it off with the battle rider which honestly i just i'm not convinced that this hero is like very playable anymore i mean i think it's only playable if you can crush your lane like let's say you pick it into ta and you can kill her like three times then okay it's viable but i don't think you play this into void spirit like void spirit is a hero that can simply do fine against bat you know bat has really bad base damage which the casters mentioned i i actually thought they did a great job so shout out to ricky and neff i honestly i i watched back i love watching back the games and i thought they did a great job it's a bit of a side note, but nonetheless, yeah. So I felt like that matchup was good. So I didn't like this bad pick. However, it was really funny. You know, really funny story. Uh, I'll surely tell you guys. So after we won game one, we were like joking. Uh, our support player, Albino, was joking. He's like, you know, <laughs> now that they're panicking, you know, <laughs> he's like, A and B can't be trusted to carry the game. So he's going to have to carry the game. <laughs> he's going to put him on this bat rider. Or yeah, he's going to make him play bat rider. And he's going to pick a greedy hero. And that's exactly what they did. So uh, AB1, Albino had the complete read on that. They literally picked Batrider Alk, which is and uh, which is just funny. So that, that was pretty funny. And, uh, you know, it, it was kind of to be expected because when you're a player, you know, of this caliber and you're playing on a team like this, you, you have ideas. And then if your, your non-greedy idea works out, typically the easiest way to play Dota is greedy Dota. It just is. And so, yeah, he goes for greedy Dota now. Now, getting into the lanes, my starting items, you notice I don't have too much region, but I honestly just plan on avoiding them. You notice from the start of this lane, look at my positioning, guys. It's very, very important to note that the reason why, um, like, people are like, they don't know why high member players are high member players. It's, like, sometimes hard to see in Dota because it's just like, oh, in the lane, all you can do is last hit, right? Well, yeah, but the main thing I have to do to be a good laner, especially as PA, is identify when I can play aggressive and when I can't. And I know because I have an AA, I can't. And it might seem simple, but think about that, guys. Like, if I play aggressive early into this wave, I can throw my entire game. I ended up getting, like, an 11-minute battle fury this game. And it's primarily because, you know, my AA and I did a great job of securing range creeps. This is fantastic, by the way. Look at this right here. Right? So we want to secure this. We don't want them to deny it. Boom. Dagger, chilling touch, range creep, dead. Boom. Doesn't get denied. Two long-range abilities. Don't have to overcommit, which is why... I really love this lane, actually. It, it, funny enough, AAPA doesn't like, you know, like, oh, it has some great synergy. It doesn't seemingly have great synergy, but it has two abilities that are really consistent at securing range creeps, really low cooldown at securing creeps in general. And uh, yeah, this whole wave kind of just felt very comfortable because of that. So I had a great time just kind of chilling and last hitting. I was also, I was full 
I was full like Super Saiyan mode. I was missing very little CS, but I'm not going to bore you with this lane. We'll skip more towards the farming in the mid game um, that I'm sure you guys want to see. But really, the entire lane is just going to look like this. Chilling touch, dagger the range creeps, pull the wave under tower, CS it, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. My AA is going to pull as much as he possibly can. And the reason why I want AA to pull in this lane, and it's great that he did pull, is because in a lane like this where uh, you, you don't win trades, what do you do? If you can't win the trades, you pull the lane back. You manipulate the wave. You create 1v1s because PA doesn't really lose many 1v1s. There's not a lot of heroes that early on into the game can just crush me. Pango's definitely not one of them. However, if I get shackled into a bunch of autos, yeah, I'll take a bunch of damage. But if he has to worry about pulls, that's not going to happen, which is why in bad lanes, pulls are not only good for getting the lane back, they're also great for creating 1v1s, which is something more people need to think about. Now in this lane, you'll notice my items. I just rush ring of health and I don't buy any boots. I don't buy any wraith ban. I don't even buy a stick. I have no, no interest in doing anything. I don't want to force them to use abilities on me, right? What I mean by that is if I was to buy a stick, I kind of want to like super hard trade, right? I, like how I see stick is it, it kind of means I'm going to be fighting a little bit because in order for me to force them to use spells, to some extent, I have to go on them, right? Like to make my stick more valuable. To be fair, if it's a lane that just naturally casts a lot of spells, I could buy it anyway. This lane is, it, it would have been okay for sure. But I just felt like the Ring of Health would be the way to go. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to play around that idea the entire lane. I did overextend there, but let's get more onto the mid game. One more play I'd like to mention that I think is a good adaptation to the lane is uh, what you need to do when the position four leaves. So you'll you'll notice here that we go in this pango when I said, oh, I'm not going to go on them this lane. And you might be like, oh, Speed, you're such a hypocrite. But th the reason why I do this is because... We know Shaman's not here. You see him mid? We know he's not here. That means it's a 2v1. You can't win most 2v1s, and so we go on Pango. Right now, we can kick him out of lane. I can deny up his creeps, and uh, also by dropping him low, we can naturally secure more creeps for me, and that's exactly what we do. We know he had uh, no swashbuckle for a bit there, so we force it out, and we're continuing to force him to play defensive while I keep up my very high CS. 40, I'm in a 7. Come on, guys. You gotta clap it up for me. That's pretty good, but that's mainly because I did not waste any time trading and I was able to focus entirely on CSing. Besides this last like minute or so where uh, we knew the Shaman wasn't there, so we amped up our pressure a little bit. Now, moving ahead here, uh, we end up getting ganked by a bat rider. It was a little bit of smoke gank. Thankfully, he bumped into the Ancient Apparition. Very convenient for me. And you notice I don't panic here. I uh, don't even blink strike out. I don't commit my dagger. I kind of just walk through the trees. I always quelling this tree so I can walk through it. Uh, my teammate taught me that. And now you notice when I'm getting gone on, I'm like, hey, we can TP in. Also, my void spirit's like, hey, I'm going to TP in. Can we kill the bat? So I wanted to go on bat, right? That's why I daggered the bat because we he made the call. Let's go on bat. So obviously that was my thought process. But then Shaman TP'd in. We obviously don't want to commit hard on bat because if we do and the Shaman's here, someone's going to get shackled. Bat's going to kill us both. So a uh, great decision by Red to go onto the Shaman and lucky for me, he's in blink strike range and then <laughs> yoink. <laughs> oh, that was so big. I was like, oh, that's so nice. Did I get ganked and I get a kill out of it and I get to farm after it? That's the carry dream. On top of that here, I TP mid. You might be wondering why. Um, very simple reason. Even though we did just win that gank, that maneuver, you'll notice I don't see the bat leaf. I don't know where he is. I know he has no lasso. But I don't want to get dove. He still can kill me. He's a high level bat. It's just how the hero works. And so I just leave. Even though technically it would have ended up being safe. I could have farmed bottom for a little bit longer. I simply did not know. And I do not want to take the risk when I'm playing a very greedy build. I don't have a stick. I don't have boots. I can die really easily. So you need to take safe farm. And frankly, mid is the safest farm in the game because it's close to the side lanes, right? Even if I get gone on, one, they can TP in. And mid is very easy to fight at. Also, if I do end up dying and my teammates TP mid, why is it okay? This is really advanced stuff here, so hear me out, okay? If I am bottom and they TP bottom, and even if we return kill them, why is that kind of mediocre? It's kind of mediocre. Because if we TP bottom and, and they save me, even if we get a kill, EE is going to farm everything top. Everything. He's going to farm all of this. No contesting. No one bothering him. We don't pressure any towers. We all play defensive. We don't want to do that here. We pick these four heroes to make moves. And so if I get on bottom, get gone on bottom, I'm going to force my entire team to go bottom. That is horrible. It's horrible. And there are some games where you can do this. If you're playing Jugger Lifestealer, you can sit in the dead lane. It's the dead lane concept, right? BSJ, you know, you know, promo code BSJ, that type of thing. It's that, right? It's that. But I, I don't think sometimes people understand the full reasoning behind it. But yeah, if you force your team to go bottom and TB bottom, 
They're so far away from anything, any active part of the map. UTP bot, no one's farming bottom. The important mid heroes and safe lane heroes you want to gank are going to be here at this point of the game. Maybe here, right? They also might TP bottom, in which case you can try to smoke gank them there. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm, I'm just going to hit some neutrals. I don't want to mess with this bat rider at all. Sure, this is not efficient for me. It's just not the number one thing I want to do. But at the end of the day, as I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not looking to greet out. I'm not looking to maximize efficiency right here. I'm not taking some crazy risk. I get my 11 minute battle fury, actually 10 minute and 58 second battle fury. And then I'm just going to blur and I'm going to hit some ancient creeps, keeping my game really simple. And you notice my team's doing a great job of simply controlling the map. They kick EE out of the jungle. They force everyone to bottom. And now look, this is so bad for the enemy team, right? So bad because the Alk is farming the triangle and then the bat and a pango are sieging a tower. It's like so meh, right? It's so meh for them, which is why I didn't want to get ganked here because then if I got ganked here, they can not only kill me, they could then get the tower and kill me, which is just really bad. So I completely get out of there early. My team does a good job of not even worrying to TP down there. I think the clock did die down there. So Dublo with his classic fee play, he's really good at that. He loves dying at safe lane. No, <laughs> he played great these series, but uh, it's funny. He does die at safe lane towers a lot. <laughs> it's a bit of a meme, but uh, all right, let's, let's take a look at this fight. So here, we kind of just knew they were coming. We felt very strong at this point. We have this like AA blast and Mars Arena. A lot of strong, strong, strong spells. Um, so we wanted to go in. I think, unfortunately, our Void Spirit ended up getting... Oh, no, our Mars got bursted, so we lost that ability in the fight, which is definitely a bummer, but honestly, it's fine. They have to commit Lasso. We don't commit Arena. They do commit Lasso. They also even commit Chem Rage, which is quite a big deal. It slows down his farming uh, more than you would think, and uh, I can just go back to farming. So now I'm going to push in the bottom wave. Reason being is the bottom wave is dangerous, right? We talk about how this is the dead lane, but... I know my AA can stack the jungle for me right now, and I don't feel pressured at all. After that that engagement, they're going to be low, they're not going to have spells, so this is safe now, right? You have to make that, that kind of quick judgment, okay, this is safe, even though it's typically dangerous, because it's very easy to smoke gank this part of the map, there's no tower protecting it. It's safe now, right? And so I want to take the hardest farm while I can. You see what I'm saying, guys? Even when you're, let's say I'm playing top, I want to take the, the hardest farm while I can, because... You want to take the safe farm after. So I push that in. I don't go too far. Once again, not taking any risks. That's not part of the game plan. Got to play it safe. Got to play it safe. And just hit my timings. And that's exactly what I do. Farm through the jungle. My stacks will be here now. Thank you, team. I decided to consider, uh, you know, showing up to that fight. But at the end of the day, it was just another skirmish to create space for me. And to play around there. There are four strong timings. Then I do decide to show up here. I just felt like I probably could get up some uh, cleanup kills. But enemy team ended up disengaging. Now, a lot of you guys might be wondering why I go BKB over Deso here, so let's talk about it. First thing I'd say is I just can't fight without BKB. Like, I could play very carefully and only go for the sidelines, but Pango and Bat, they're just so consistent with their magical damage that at some point they're gonna get on me and disarm me and, and blah blah blah. So like, I didn't want to rush Deso and I want to go this BKB just because I felt like my team comp could play fast if we wanted to. I'm not pressured to like shut down this Alk, honestly. Like my team at this point of the game, we're like, Alk can do whatever he wants. And at some point we actually made a couple mistakes and he almost carried this game, but we didn't feel pressured to like really shut him down. We did smoke ink into the triangle, which was a great movement by my team. Um, that was kind of a weird engagement, but it, that's a fine movement. But we didn't really need to shut down the Alk. We're confident that if he's the only hero with farmer on their team and it's a 1v1 between me and him late game, I'm going to win that. Like, not even like a 1v1 between me and him. I'll just kill all of his supports before he can kill mine. PA is so much quicker when it comes to killing supports and my supports are harder to kill, right? I have this clock, uh, my AA is a glimmer and they, they have like, you know, Shaman CM. Sure, AA is an easy kill, but Shaman CM, you know, compared to a hero like Clockwork are much, much, much easier kills when I have BKB and so... My team ended up getting picked off. I think uh, I did show up to this fight quick, but it looked bad, so I get out. Remember, guys, you don't have to commit to fights just because your team is dying. As the carry player, you're timing oriented. I, I'm not at my timing yet. I know that. I need to be very strict around this timing. So many people will be like, oh, but I'll get flamed here. Yes, you will. Right? That's the thing about in pubs. I, I recently was coaching one of my students in a, in a live game, and, you know, he's like, wow, Speed, I, I probably would have showed up to a lot of these bad fights, and it's true. You show up to a lot of bad fights if you're not really focused on what you need to do to win the game. And uh, you can help your team. You notice, I look to help my team. I, I know I'm strong, especially now that I BKB. But even though I'm strong, right, I still need to be careful and uh, understand that my hero is weak for now. All right, moving on here, we come to a, our first fight of the game, our first major team fight. And uh, I messed up this fight, so let's talk about it. Let's see what I could have done better. 
Now, we ended up going in here. You notice I don't jump the Pango. Why? Because I just want to make sure we can chain stun him. I don't want to initiate, right? I, I want to make sure my stuns initiate, not me. And uh, so that's exactly what we wait for. I wait for the stuns. I'm going to go on the Pango, pop my BKB. I just find it very important. If we can blow up the Pango and he gets nothing off, it's a great start to the fight. That's exactly what happens. We also get the AA blast onto the Alk. Now, he had a BKB, so honestly here, I think I felt like I can burst him through it if with a little bit of luck. Um, I did end up getting a crit. Obviously, I only hit him twice because of the BKB, and then this is where I make my mistake. I was like, oh, so you'll see me click him here, right? When do I click him? I don't remember. Did I click him before? Oh, I clicked him right there. So you see me click him, right, guys? You see me click him, and I see, okay, he still has AA Blast on him. And this is where I made the I made the, the decision to say, okay, he still has AA Blast on him for, like, whatever the duration is, like, two seconds. If I get a crit here, even if I hit him, I felt like, even if I hit him, if I get a crit, I definitely kill him. But even if I hit him twice, I felt like, okay, the AA Blast will finish him off. But I think I blink in here and cancel my auto? Or I didn't have blink up, and then there still was a bit of frostbite time, but... He slightly got out of vision, which caused me to cancel my auto. So I didn't get off an auto. And uh, yeah, he lived. He was able to kite that out. Now he starts healing up to full, you know, classic alchemist things. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I get kited out. So it didn't really look foolish in the moment. But, uh, you know, I saw the AA blast still on him and I went for it. But overall, it was completely unneeded. We had already forced his BKB and so on. I didn't have to do that. I could have just reset. As I said, I win late game. I don't need to like... We, as long as we like semi win the fights, honestly, in my opinion, it's a win just for that reason. Now here we go to a Roche fight. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I, I played it fine. I just overextended again. So I jumped to CM. Then I don't BKB, which is fine. Like, I don't think they can burst me yet. I guess they could technically chain stun me, but my whole team is here. I didn't feel like I could get chain stun. I do have to be a little bit careful about it. Like, oh, Pango used roll, right. Oh, so he didn't have roll. Okay, so I... That was the reason. I knew I couldn't get chain stun for whatever reason, so I don't pre-pop my BKB. Then I think I pop it here? Yeah, so I pop it as late as I can, which is fine. I kill the Shaman, and then, yeah, I kind of just get beat down, uh, which was a bit surprising to me, but yeah, my clock didn't have uh, didn't have his ulti, so he couldn't get in, and they just beat me down, which was honestly surprising to me in the moment. I was like, oh, wow, I actually just straight up died to this uh, Bash plus Monkey King bar. He did first hit Bash me, which was unfortunate, but even if he didn't, I think I still would have had the same fate. So, yeah, I guess once again, I just had to slow play the fight. I had to kite it out, because if I did kite it out, I didn't have to pop my BKB that early, but, uh, yeah, we had no AA there, too, which is probably the biggest issue, you know. If there was an AA Vortex and Blast, probably an easy fight. Nonetheless, we were still very confident in this game. You know, we, we still felt like um, we had the late game. It's like an OG thing, you know. It's like, okay, no matter how bad the game gets, even if it gets uncomfortable, which is still, it's fine. All their net worth is on Alk, which isn't like a good thing you know alk people are like oh if alk's not like 20k ahead he's losing dude alk ak ahead is still very very scary fortunately we took a great fight here thankfully their battle rider a and b messed up here uh oh he had no blink that's why i was like why couldn't he get on top of someone but he had no blink so our mars got the blink out there uh, i think he should have tried to flame break him but we end up getting the full cut out which was great and this is how you know it's a high more game people are like Twitch chat. <laughs> I, I don't know what that was. That made no sense. But uh, this is like one of those things. This is huge, guys. You see how right away every single player on this team knows BKB run away. BKB run away. In a lot of games, people are like, oh, BKB, he messed up, go in. No, but if he messes up in BKBs, you run away, you kite the BKB, then you go in. And it's so much more effective. That's what we do here. We kite the BKB. Also, uh, fortunately, PA Blur is so good, dude. I love PA Blur. It's so much fun to play around here. Uh, because you notice, as I farm this camp, I see the Shaman, but I don't panic because I'm like, oh, I have PA Blur. He can't see me. And uh, it's such a small radius that, get, that gets it broken. It's literally so small, man. So they don't see me. Then uh, we see this Battle Rider. Quick decision to jump him. I know he has no BKB. I, get, uh, I think I get my dagger off last second. Boom, to crit. He would have died regardless. But yeah, that's a big jump for us here. Then, oh, look at his cogs. Double A with the clogs. The clogs. <laughs> he does clog them in there, dude. They get clogged on. Uh, and then a uh, great AA blast. So this is honestly a great fight. You know, these three heroes, our Alk dealing with heroes, our, our Mars combo with the Vortex on top of the AA blast deals with the Alk. So that's fantastic. He does have Aegis, but the thing is about Alk is, honestly, I think he probably had to pop his VKB there. They probably lose the fight anyway because of the clog. But, um... You know, if you don't have BKB Rage, I, I mean, sorry, if you don't have Rage, Alka is pretty bad, honestly. Like, this hero without Chem Rage is quite bad. You have no movement speed, lower attack speed, 
no HP regen. It's quite miserable, honestly. And so, uh, one second. I just want to shout out these cogs again. God tier cogs. I didn't even, um, press my BKB, which I probably should have here. I just assumed they didn't have spells, which is probably not the best thing. I definitely should have popped my BKB, but regardless, we take this fight. No problem whatsoever. They're all dead. We clean up EE as well. He tries to BKB TP out, but that is not going to be good enough. And we win the fight. So, now we're feeling good, right? At this point of the game, we're feeling good. We're feeling ourselves... We got our Basher, and now that I got Basher, this is PA's time. Also, my level 20 armor corruption talent as well, and uh, the game starts to fall apart for them. Absolutely falls apart. We get another pick off, and this happens a lot in pubs, guys. And so, here's a little tip for your pubs. Guys, you'll see this happen a lot. Someone gets picked off, your team tilts, things start to fall apart. What do you have to do? You have to get your team to wait, play patient, not get picked off, and sit in the base. Now, my team, we start getting pick off after pick off. We end up getting kind of like a little bit greedy in bottom here. Uh, we end up getting lassoed and some shackles, so pretty disastrous fight, funny enough for us. Um, the game actually shifts back in their favor there. Once again, I'm, I'm like, okay, this is not a good fight for us. I'm not even going to bother showing up. I'm going to play it slow, get some illusions. I'll send those to push out mid, hit some creeps, right? It's fine, guys. Remember, you don't have to win every fight to win Dota. you got to take the good fights. So I push and pop, push and top, push and top. But getting back to my point... When your team is getting picked off, you need to rally the troops. They did a very good job there of saying, okay, we're respawning. They're overextending bottom. I'm talking about Byzantine Raiders, right? We punish that. So they did a good job of coming back there and making sure they don't continue to get picked off. You got to group up when your team's getting tilted. You got to be the leader and say, guys, let's group up when X person respawns. You have to do that. Now, I end up popping a blur here. I'm looking for whatever pick off I can find. At this point in the game, I'm very hard for them to kill with this BKB blur. As long as I'm blurred... It's very hard for them to get the jump, right? That's the biggest advantage of PA in the late game. It's Blur. A lot of people don't understand that. Like, Blur is everything. It really is. PA without Blur late game would be quite actually bad. It would be hard for you to get on top of targets, um, even with Bling Strikes. So, you're going to see me. I, I'm kiting out. I'm not even going up this hill until I have Blur. So, we pop a smoke here. Now, with the smoke, we're kind of looking to play around. Now, we could have jumped here. I'll talk about this a little bit. Honestly, we probably could have jumped. We have this God War. So, we see them. They don't know this, but we see them. And honestly, I think like looking back at this, we, we could jump, but obviously we know they're all together. So we're very hesitant to just jump into all of them. Um, but we did have this vision. Trust me, this is actual vision. We see them. So you might be saying, why not just jump? Honestly, we probably should have. I think we're just hesitant. We're just like, we don't want to throw the game. We don't want to jump into five heroes. Let's just wait for them to split up. We were hoping that they would walk onto our hill as well, right? Um, you know, in general in Dota, like you just want to wait for they, them to walk up a hill for vision, but we already had vision, so we probably could have just made the jump there, honestly. Uh, but we decided not to. We decided to play it safe, which I think is okay for the situation that we're in, for the game that we're in. And so I just push in the top wave, and then I'm going to wait for another opportunity to pick them off. And now here, this is where our big break came, right? Um, a lot of people, it's funny, I saw their analysis in Twitch chat, and I'm like, eh, a very shallow analysis. And I'm not saying that to flame people, it's just like, what they were saying is, oh, PA just wins the late game, that's why they win. It's like, yeah, yeah, you just win late game with PA, you know, it's insta. We're 8k behind. I mean, sure, it's an elk. It's 8k of, you know, a lot of elk network. But yeah, their bat has a lot of farm. Their pango's pretty farm. This game is not, like, in our favor just because it's, like, PA. No, it's largely dependent on who gets to jump. I can still get chain stunned and die. And then the fight's just over. Look at the jug game, game one, if you guys watched that. I, I got chain stunned and died, even though we were so far ahead. I misplayed it. They got the vision advantage to jump and we die. But here, look at the map. Boom. Quick mini-map awareness. I see the bad rider go up. I see them go down. I've realized that very quickly that, oh, this guy is way alone. And even though I don't get a bash, which, <laughs> bummer. Even though I don't get a bash, who cares? Lasso completely wasted. Right, it's such a bad lasso. I mean, there's no follow-up. Who is he bringing me to? The lore. He's bringing me to God because he's about to perish. And, you know, now they TP him one by one. They want to save this bat, but his BKB is already used. Great hook shot by the clock to, to prevent him from getting away from me incredible spear dude that was so fast from giant so very well played the the incredible reaction time from giant and dubla there i'm gonna head ahead here to light shader as well the account buyer feeding and uh yeah he goes down as well and after that they kind of just die one by one we see the shaman on a war he's farming a camp i think they're just kind of tilted at this point i'm not gonna lie i'm godlike and then we see e pushing in mid which is just I, I don't know. I think he's just not focused because uh, this is like a no respect play. I'm just going to jump in. We have the cogs. I drop my abyssal. I technically abyssal a little bit early, but we have so many stuns. He gets fully focused. They buy back, but it's not enough. And then you'll see my awareness. This is good. Uh, this is a good jump here. Very, very good job on my part to have the awareness to look to the back line. 
And this is what you want to do as PA, right? Typically, uh, once you've killed their main carry, if that's your number one hero, you're moving on, right? And do keep in mind, when you're playing PA, you don't have to go for supports. I think a lot of the time people are like, you have to. No, you don't have to. Right here, I, I really want to jump this elk because I know we can burst them. The thing is, a lot of the time PA can't burst the core. They're too high armor. And so you don't bother doing that. But in this case, right... Alk is just stunned, so I want to provide my damage, I want to coordinate, so even though I don't necessarily do the most myself, it's fine, right? We'll take him out, then I pop my BKB right before the penguin roll hits me, and I'm going to jump the back line. And now, obviously, this Shaman is quite freaking strong. I mean, Shaman late game is brutal if you don't kill him, so I do put the focus on him. Double crit, baby. <laughs> yeah! Oh, you gotta love it. And then I just, like, two-shot the CM, three-shot or whatever. She's dead, and uh, this is where the game completely falls apart for them. I am incredibly strong now. Yes, PA late game is an absolute menace. Uh, we're not going to dive here. You might be saying, Speed, why don't you go on these guys? There's three dead. We just don't want to throw, right? I mean, it's just a lose condition to go on this guy. Who knows if I get, if I get disarmed under the tower and no BKB and then flame break back into the tower and a bunch of nonsense that could kill me in some BS way, you know? And so we play it safe. We chill. We get our Aegis, you know? This is the way you want to play Dota. This is the safe way to play Dota. We don't even go for the range racks. Learning lesson here, you guys, you do not need the Ranger Axe. We took melee. Melee is better than ranged if you can get it, right? If you can only pick one, you go for melee. Ranged is faster, so sometimes you do go for ranged first. But we go for melee because we knew they were dead for long enough. And then after we get the melee, not even going to go for range. It's not worth it. Do not take both. Do not get caught in their base. It is the worst place you can fight. I talk about this all the time. We back up. We go take Roche instead. The safe play. Then they're going to obviously, they want to smoke, they want to contest the Roche, but it's way too late, right? Way, way, way too late. And we decided to back up, which I think was a good decision here. It's like, okay, they're probably going to make a desperation play when teams are, you know, falling behind. They want to make a desperation play. They also might smoke out for the Roche. And I was close to level 25 as well. Uh, so I kind of wanted to try to farm that before doing anything crazy. Now they ended up jumping mid. And uh, this is where, dude, he, oh, he makes the big mistake. He throws a fully charged cocktail at a Lotus Clock. And uh, Lotus Cocktail stun duration is based on how long you charge it for. It's the normal stun. And so uh, EE ends up stunning himself for like five seconds. And <laughs> well, we got the A blast with the Ice Vortex as well. So he completely gets bursted. Great decision by my team just all in. Also, I just want to shout out AB1 here. Dude, I don't know. He was on his game here. He was like super mode. I, I was watching in the replay. I'm like, wow, shout out to him, dude. Really fast Ice Vortex here. You notice... After the, the um, bottle gets reflected, no hesitation. Like, literally no hesitation. He gets stunned, insta-ulti. That's what you call confidence, baby. But he knows this guy gets stunned, our team should jump. So, fantastic ulti. It really is a, uh, you know, just a heads-up play, knowing his role. And it's like, ah, but he should just always use it on Elk. Yeah, but in order to do it that quickly, knowing the stun's going to connect and realize that, okay, Elk didn't BKB the low to stun, is a great recognition. And uh, yeah, now, once again, I'm just going to jump the back line. Honestly, I didn't even do this much in this fight. I decided not to focus down the CM and just cancel out the Shackle here, which I think was the right decision. You know, just make sure that the, the Shaman can't control my guy. But yep, that's going to be about the end of this video as we take them down. Oh yeah, I think um, they end up kiting us out. Uh, there is one more play I'd like to talk about before we end it off. It was a great map movement that uh, enabled my team to get another pick off and end off this game. But let's take a look at what that is. First things first, I just want to say I swapped out my boots. Quick little tip. My team uh, was very useful here. AB1 with another good call out. He's like, uh, you know, give our PA the spider legs, which is true. I have no boots. So spider legs give you movement speed. They give you 65 movement speed, which is huge. Makes me really fast and 50% turn rate. So there's my boots. It's actually a great PA late game item as well. Once I have this axe, because I can kind of just roam the map and do whatever I want and scout things out. Now here, what is the play that I make that's really useful for my team? You'll see. My team's all bottom. It's like speed. You can't go top. They're all top, obviously. They're obviously going to be all top. Yeah, but I'm so confident. A BKB, Abyssal, Aegis, Blur, 10 second cooldown Blur. I can. It's literally a purge now, right? It's a 10 second cooldown Blur that purges me. So even if Batrider tries to sticky me, I just purge it. So I run all the way across here. I see this tree uh, chop. I see the Pango. Realistically, I do want a Phantom Strike before Abyssaling for the attack speed, but I think I just committed it here. I was like, eh, I don't want to lose vision of him. And uh, yeah, boom, the crit, gone. <laughs> Love to see it. So we get that kill. I think he had no buyback. Um, so you see, I, I draw the line. I'm like, let's go bottom. I did blur here. I even could have jumped this bat potentially, but not worth it. Not worth the risk. I don't want to throw, get shackled in the base with no follow up. So that would be, that's like an unnecessary risk, right? I got the pango pick off. That lets us go high ground, right? Remember, pickoffs are key. I don't want to dive too deep here unless I have to. 
I ended up getting lassoed, which is whatever. I knew my Aegis timer was about 38. I don't remember the exact thing, but my teammate kept track. I think it was like 38.40, so I knew I didn't have to panic here. So I get gone on, I swap in my treads. And uh, yeah, my team hits this huge combo, the four man arena to like a two man ice blast. And yeah, they're absolutely done for here. There is nothing that they can do. I'm just going to abyssal up Envy. He's stuck. That's the end. That's $1,400 for your boy speed. And man, I just want to once again, shout out to my teammates. We really hung in there. It was a tough season, right? We came in sixth place, but hey, that's good enough to win quite a bit of money, which is, is you know, it was just awesome. And it's not even about the money, honestly. I know I'm saying money, but like, that's because it's cool, but. At the end of the day, really what was the best part is just like coming together with my team, sticking it out. We did scrim quite a bit before this game to try to win it. Even uh, one of the, the DPC teams that's moving on to Div 1, the cut, scrimmed us right before this, acting like they were uh, Byzantine Raiders, you know, kind of doing like a mock draft, which is, you know, totally legal. It's just, you know, it's just practice. There's nothing wrong with that. And uh, they helped us out as well. Which, so big shout out to them um, for doing that for us. And all the teams we scrimmed before, we scrimmed simply two base, so appreciate to the, uh, them for doing that. All the teams we scrimmed before, shout out to Giant, Red, Dubla, Obino, Mio, everyone, uh, honestly, and all of you guys for supporting me. Like, as I said in the beginning of the video, thank you so much for supporting me. I really had a great time. Uh, I love what Valve did here uh, with the DPC. I just think it's, um, it's really awesome, you know, bringing a lot of light to Division 2 Dota, which is still great Dota. It's, in my opinion, still very high quality Dota, even though it can be a little bit messy sometimes. <laughs> it can get a little messy. You know, at the end of the day, we all need, you know, we all need a game leaps up to, to fix our problems. You know, we can't, we can't play perfect Dota because we don't all have a lifetime game leaps up. Believe it or not, I don't even have one. But don't worry, after this series, now that I have that money, I'm going to spend it on 14 lifetime game leaps subs. So I can't wait to own those. But nonetheless, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.